The White Death slash Luda are the Lyuda, which it is more commonly referred to in the community, is one of the most deadliest snipers in all of Borderlands, but the proper pronunciation for the weapon is actually the Luda. The Luda is actually based off of two of the deadliest snipers in history, the first of which is Ludmila Pavlyshenko. Ludmila Makhelnova Pavlyshenko was a Soviet sniper in the Red Army during World War II. In June 1941, Pavlyshenko, aged 24, was studying at Kiev University when Nazi Germany began its invasion of the Soviet Union. Pavlyshenko was among the first round of volunteers at Odessa recruiting office, where she requested to join the infantry. The registry, however, pushed Pavlyshenko to be a nurse, but she refused. After seeing that Pavlyshenko had completed several of the training courses, she was, however, recruited to the Red Army's 25th Rifle Division. There she became one of 2,000 female snipers in the Red Army, of whom only about 500 of which survived. Although Pavlyshenko was assigned to a combat role, she was only issued a fragmentation grenade because of weapon shortages, but on August 8, 1941, a fallen comrade handed her his Mosin Nagant 1891 bolt-action rifle. Pavlyshenko shot her first two enemies and proved herself to her comrades. Pavlyshenko would go on to describe this event as her baptism of fire. Pavlyshenko fought for about two and a half months during the siege of Odessa and recorded 187 kills. She was promoted to senior sergeant in August 1941 when she reached 100 confirmed kills. At 25, she married fellow sniper Alexei Kosenko. Soon after her marriage to Alexei, he was mortally wounded by mortar fire and later died from his injuries. When the Nazis and their Romanian allies overran Odessa on the 15th of October 1941, her unit was withdrawn by sea to Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula. There she trained other snipers who killed over a hundred Axis soldiers during the battle. In May 1942, Newly promoted Lieutenant Pavlyshenko was cited by the Southern Army Council for killing 250 Axie soldiers. Her total confirmed kills during World War II was about 309, including 36 Axie snipers. In June 1942, Pavlyshenko was hit in the face by shrapnel from mortar shells. When she was injured, the High Soviet Command ordered her to be evacuated to Sevastopol via submarine. She spent around a month in the hospital. Once Pavlyshenko had recovered from her injuries, instead of being sent back to the front, she became the protagonist for the Red Army. Her high kill count gave her the nickname Lady Death. She also trained snipers for combat duty until the end of the war in 1945. In summary guys, Ludmila Mikhailnova Pavlyshenko was a Soviet sniper in the Red Army during World War II who was credited with over 309 deaths, making her the most successful female sniper in recorded history. Next guys, we will be talking about the White Death himself, Simo Heha. Simo Heha, often referred to by his nickname, the White Death, was a Finnish military sniper during World War II. Simo Heha fought against the Soviet Union during the Winter War of 1939 and 1940. While in combat, the White Death used a Finnish produced M28 and M30, which is a variant of the Mosin Nagant rifle. He also used a submachine gun, the Suomi KP31. It is believed Simo Heha, aka the White Death, killed over 500 men during the Winter War the highest number of sniper kills in any major war. Simo Heha served as a sniper in the Finnish army during the 1939 and 1940 Winter War. He served in the 6th Company of the 34th Infantry Regiment. During the Battle of Kola, temperatures were between negative 40 and negative 20 degrees Celsius. Simo Heha dressed completely in white camouflage. Soviet troops were not issued camouflage uniforms for most of the war, making them easily visible during winter sniper conditions. 
See, during this time, Joseph Stalin had purged military experts in late 1930s as part of the Great Purge in the Red Army. And consequently, as a result of the Great Purge, the Red Army was highly disorganized. Finnish sources state that Simo Heha was issued the White Death nickname by the Red Army themselves. Other sources state that the name the White Death has originated entirely in Finnish propaganda rather than given to Simo Heha by the Russians. Regardless of where the name the White Death originates, I think we can all agree that this man was definitely worthy of the title. All of Simo Heha's kills were accomplished in less than 100 days, an average 5 kills per day during the time of the year with very few daylight hours. His kill count as a sniper was based on his own reporting with confirmation of his comrades, and only those who were verified dead were counted. Simo Heha's division commander credited him with 219 confirmed kills with a rifle and an equivalent number of confirmed kills with a submachine gun when he awarded Heha an honorary rifle on the 17th of February 1940. On December 21st, 1939, Heha achieved his highest daily kill count at 25. In his diary, military chaplain Auntie reported 259 confirmed kills made by rifle and an equivalent amount of confirmed kills made by submachine gun from the beginning of the war until the 7th of March 1940. Unfortunately, one day after that, Heha was severely wounded. Later in his book, Ron Tomei credited Heha with a total of 542 confirmed kills. Simo Heha never discussed it publicly, but in his own private memoir, discovered in 2017, it states a number. He begins by stating, this is his sin list, and estimates the total number shot by him to be around 500. Simo Heha, aka the White Death, is credited as being the most deadliest sniper in all of history. Simo Heha was so effective that the Soviets literally regularly used mortar fire to try to kill him. And one thing that amazes me is he did all of this over 500 kills mainly with a sniper with iron sights. Simo Heha preferred iron sights over telescopic sights as they enable a sniper to present a smaller target for the enemy. Also, telescopic sights in cold weather have a tendency to fog up. Another disadvantage of telescopic sights as opposed to iron sights is telescopic sights may reflect the sunlight, thereby revealing a sniper's position. On March 6, 1940, Heha was severely wounded after an explosive bullet fired by the Red Army hit his lower jaw. After the battle, he appeared to be dead. He was placed on a pile of bodies. A fellow soldier under orders from his commanding officer searched Heha and noticed Heha's leg twitched among the pile. He found that Heha was still alive, although unconscious. He was evacuated by fellow soldiers who said that half of his face was missing. The bullet had removed his upper jaw and most of his lower jaw and his left cheek. Rumors about Heha's death spread around Finland and the Soviet Union. He regained consciousness a week later on March 13th, the day peace was declared. He read about his own death in the newspaper and sent a letter to the paper correcting the misunderstanding. He spent 14 months recovering from his wounds and endured 26 surgeries. Simo Heha was awarded the first and second class Medal of Liberty, as well as the third and fourth class Crosses of Liberty. The latter two are normally only granted to commission officers. It took several years for Simo Heha to regenerate from his wounds which required lengthy treatments and several surgeries, and although his face remained disfigured for the rest of his life, 
he would otherwise make a full recovery after World War II. Simo Heha was given a small farm located in southern East Finland near the Russian border. He became a successful moose and dog breeder. In addition to farming, he enjoyed hunting, and his hunting parties over the years included the president of Finland. And guys, this has been the story of Simo Heha, the White Death, and Lady Death. Ludmila Pavlyshenko. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you got this far in the video, please like, subscribe, sub, comment, anything is much appreciated. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys next time. You guys have a beautiful day. Peace.